Welcome to the show. You're listening to eSpace, Seven Sins Odyssey, with me, Sev, and... Me, Sid! All right. That sounded like Meeson. Meeson. <laughs> I'm Meeson. 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 Yeah. <laughs> um, we have a bit on our plate today. We are going to be talking about movies and television. Said last episode, we would be gaming centered, but we'd branch off in other topics. Well, that time is now. The future is here. And The uh, future is nigh. Yes. It is, <laughs> it is on the verge of coming up. And uh, yeah, we're going to talk about movies and TV. Stuff that we liked. Stuff that's uh, coming up and um, all that good stuff. So why don't we just jump right into it? Let's talk about some of the films that we enjoyed from last year. Good year, 2014. The films from last year, man. There was there was some pretty interesting stuff that came out. You know what was hard is to remember, like, okay, what came out exact? Because like the years start to blend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a problem. It wasn't. A, it, it was a pretty big year for for some films. There was some pretty big stuff in there, but I I don't, I don't think it was like huge, <laughs> as big as other years. You think of like, you know, two thousand twelve. That was like, heyday for a lot of movies. Yeah, that was the in year. That was a big year. That was a big year. <laughs> so I mean, not not the biggest year, but there was definitely some good stuff out there. Um. What did you enjoy? What did what, what did you like best out of out of that year? If you can if you can if you can recall, <laughs> um, 2014 housed uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes, yes, very much. And I thought that was a pretty good film. We actually saw Godzilla together. We did, if yeah. you recall, and that was like <laughs> that, that was, was like a good movie. Yeah, and um, I enjoyed that one as well. The Hunger Games. I because I had read the books, so okay. I was like, you know, I'm gonna gander. Into part one of Mockingjay, and you know I wasn't disappointed. It was pretty had you good had you been following that series of films? Yeah, I had been. Okay. I had been. So it was like it was exciting, but you know I I could go on for like a whole nother podcast as to why it wasn't. <laughs> oh, happy. I know. Yeah, there's some a lot parts. to go with Hunger Games and uh, a sleeper that I saw with some friends because he wants to go take his little brother. is Big Hero Six. Okay, all right. That that's, was that's one I did not see. Um, so I don't have too many opinions on that i mean it looked all right but i didn't get a chance to see that one How'd you it feel was about more that or less like a it's a forgettable fun movie okay um it's not special it's not all special right. like in the generic meaning but it, i mean it's a fun movie it has like a good soundtrack to it mm. and there was like a couple songs at the very like middle and at the end i went home and downloaded because i was like this this is a good soundtrack <laughs> cool like aside from that though it's your typical young person uh, you film know, kids young adult <laughs> film yeah but it did stand out to me it right. did good it stuff did. out of um out of those those kind of films that you handpicked which would you say was the one that you enjoyed the most oh that's a tough one i'd probably say godzilla oh yeah quite honestly i would because it was like a it wasn't the it was like the first time i had ever watched a movie like that a bit that like was like a, a like a kaiju you know big yeah. monster movie and it was like hollow Hollywood eyes. I don't know the term I'm looking for, but it was. <laughs> had you was, seen? Did you see the first American Godzilla? Uh, I had the one back in like parts 90, of it. 97 or 98. Yeah, I had okay. seen parts of it. I forget who I was with, but they were showing me clips of it, and I was like, "This isn't really me." So I kind of went into that <laughs> feel with the okay. new one, but I didn't get that, and I was that, happy. Yeah, I mean, I think I think with the this past Godzilla that came out last year, I think it does. As Hollywoodized as it is, it does sort of feel more like a classic Godzilla film, though. And uh, I'm not sure if you've seen too many of the older ones, like the original Japanese ones. No, I haven't. Okay, yeah, I'm a, I'm a pretty big Godzilla fan. I mean, I've watched all the eras. I've I, I think I've seen all the films. I can't. There's been so many, but um, I'm pretty sure I've seen all of them. Uh, my favorite periods were the Heisei period, uh, which was like the '90s films. Okay. And those I had, you know, I had all those as as a kid on VHS. <laughs> I used to watch those all the time. <laughs> um and um but yeah, it's like I grew up watching Godzilla and uh I saw I saw the original American one in uh in theaters. It was like in 97 or 98 or something. 
and that I you know I didn't I didn't mind it as, especially as a kid I was like whoa there's like explosions and there's this big lizard and he's running around and stuff <laughs> it's like cool it didn't it didn't exactly feel like even back then I knew like it didn't feel like a like a Japanese Godzilla movie but I thought it was okay but when you get on the internet like years later you find out how much people hate stuff <laughs> and yeah <laughs> yeah and I, I didn't really change my viewpoint on it but yeah it did kind of put it in its place and it's like yeah it's not it's not the greatest movie there have been worse i mean i'll go out on a limb i'll probably get a bunch of hate for this but there have been worse like japanese godzilla movies than the first american one <laughs> okay but um I... yeah but yeah this remake i i enjoyed thoroughly as well saw it with you uh, in theaters, had a good time. It was time. fun. Yeah, very it was fun. fun. Um, it did catch a little bit of criticism for being a little slow and not having too much of the title character, but I think I don't know. It felt like it built it up for me. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, it it was a good action movie where it had a good balance of like mm-hmm. drama and action. It wasn't too geared just towards like yeah. Exactly. Godzilla coming, tearing stuff up, and then leaving, and like peace. It was more like a story <laughs> behind the movie too, yep. and mm-hmm. I made it more fun. And a lot of people, some people do criticize on that fact as well. They say, "Well, a Godzilla movie should be about Godzilla. You don't, you know, you don't have these people running around." And it's like, well, if you actually watch, if you watch the original Godzilla, like the very first one, it's all about people. It's about people that like you don't see Godzilla for a long time in that movie, so it feels. <laughs> I mean, the, this remake feels similar, sort of, to the first one. I'm not going to say it's like an exact remake, but, you know, in pacing, it's very similar. It's sort of a slower pace. It does have drama. It's sort of like this mystery of unraveling, you know, what these big monsters are and stuff. And um, and it's like, yeah, if you watch pretty much any Godzilla movie, except for, there's probably like three out of however many there's been, 25 or whatever, um, there's... Uh, there's always going to be a, a main, you know, human character that you follow. Yeah. Throughout the story, just just so that it's relatable. Because if you just saw like a nonstop monster action mash movie, I mean, that's when you think about it. I mean, sure, on the surface it might be fun, but that's it's not gonna it's not gonna be fulfilling. <laughs> no way. It, yeah. After a while, it'd start to turn into like those generic. Yep. Action kind of movies like, yeah, that kind of get explosions draining. everywhere, and yeah, it just kind of gets tedious after a while. Hot girl, hot girl, explosion. <laughs> Transformers. Yeah, I was gonna say like a Michael Bay film, but yeah, I was like, yeah, ah, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, um, Transformers, highest grossing film of last year. Really? Yeah. Are and you kidding you, me? What's even weirder? It's it's the only film that breached a billion dollars last year. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, and it's no. kind of it's kind of hard to believe. A, uh, Age of Did you see that? Did you see Age of Extinction? No, I didn't. I I don't I don't like to be super opinionated, but I had the uh, unfortunate displeasure of watching that in the theaters. Wow. I don't. You know, it's like the Transformer series. It, it it's it's okay to watch and go to the theater and you know be entertained for a little while. But yeah. with Age of Extinction, it's exactly like you said. It, it's this one in particular felt like a, like a nonstop action movie where there was like l- very little substance, and it did get it, it got hard to watch towards the like the last <laughs> forty minutes, um, and for some people they wouldn't even be able to stand it that long, uh, but yeah, but it's surprising that you know worldwide, but you know all these like Indian countries and stuff they love their action movies so, <laughs> yeah, they're going to see it a thousand times. And it's gonna breach the billion marker, but it's like the only the only movie to to get past a billion dollars worldwide of last year. That's pretty crazy. My goodness, mm-hmm. that's very surprising, actually. Yeah, and then some of the films, some of these other films, like uh, you had mentioned, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, I think that was in at number three, um, according to my notes here, seven hundred seventy-four million dollars. I could see that. I could definitely see yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it's a new franchise, so not a whole lot of people... I mean, when something brand new comes out like that, you're not going to have as many people paying tickets, paying money for it. Um, when it, you know, you, You're not going to know if uh, you're going to like it or not. So, But word of mouth on that movie spread very it, it did, quickly. Yeah, it did. People were like, oh, I wasn't going to see it, but I'm <laughs> definitely going to see it now. Oh, yeah, well, people loved it so much, like the initial... Uh, wave of people that went to go see it in theaters and it just got such high praise and uh, good critical reception. Yeah. It just, um, 
you know, word of mouth took over and people went to go see it. And it, it, it did pretty good for being a, a brand new franchise in the Marvel series. And that, then that's piques yeah. my curiosity. What else was on that list? Well, let's see the top 10. It's stuff that, Obviously, people have heard of. <laughs> There's nothing Maybe. that's... Uh, yeah. Like, I perhaps have heard <laughs> of it. Like, um, um. <laughs> yeah, there was... Um, number two was uh, the last Hobbit movie, Battle of the Five Armies. That makes sense. Yeah, um, big franchise. That didn't even breach a billion, though. Yeah, I see it here is 955 million. Yeah, coming in a little low. Um, and, I mean, it's kind of understandable. I can I can see why people would be going, you know, for repeat showings of the last couple movies, but maybe not this one. Um, very, very action heavy. Was it? Yeah, super action heavy. Probably my least favorite of the trilogy. Um, but it, it seemed like the whole movie was kind of like this extended battle scene. <laughs> okay. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but there was a few moments inside of the Lord of the Rings series that kind of felt like that too, right? Like, if I'm not there mistaken, were, yeah. yeah. I think the biggest problem with the Hobbit franchise, though, is that originally, um, when they set when Peter Jackson was going to first set down and make it, well, he wasn't even supposed to be the original director. But when he got around to making it, it was originally only supposed to be two movies. Oh. And then they said, "Well, yeah, let's." I don't know what the thought process was, but I'm uh, going out on a limb and saying they probably thought they could milk it a bit. Yeah. And get the, <laughs> knock out a third movie. And they did. <laughs> and they did, yeah. And um, pretty much we we get uh, Battle of the Five Armies. And it was like it, there wasn't like a whole lot to go on because they had eaten up a lot of the story. I mean, you think about the Lord of the Rings trilogy, all right? That's three separate books. And they're they're all like really long reads. Um, you think about The Hobbit, big book, uh, still considered a, a children's novel, though. It's just one book. And yeah. it's like you try to spread that out across three films uh, and still kind of retain a lot of substance in there. Mm, not going to quite do it. And, yeah, it kind of fell short in Battle of the Five Armies is what I thought. But it still made a decent amount of money. So high praise for that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't make a billion, though. But yeah. My thing is it's probably along the lines of people realizing that it wasn't like the first two and that mm -hmm. not necessarily they burn their audience, but perhaps that they – had like with the first two they had built up such a big rapport that with the third film people went regardless they just heard Pretty Hobbit, much and then they yeah. kind of watched the movie and <laughs> yeah that's what i'm thinking is i mean you don't you're not gonna have a whole lot of uh repeat buyers <laughs> going to see that movie because there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot to it so whereas uh unexpected journey and um Desolation of Smog, there was a little bit more substance, so people probably wanted to go see that multiple times. I know I saw both of those movies two or three times, the first two. And yeah. And the third one I've only seen once. So there you go. That's just my viewpoint. Getting some traction. <laughs> mm, yeah. I mean, I'll still buy it regardless, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and at number four was Maleficent. Maleficent. Yeah, made uh, $758 million in the box office worldwide. I uh, did not get a chance to see that myself. Looked kind of interesting, Angelina Jolie. Yeah, that's the... why a lot of people went for Angelina. <laughs> yeah, <Roy>. probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, classic uh, Disney villain. So, I mean, you're kind of going off a, a well-known character anyway. So you can imagine a whole lot of people uh, going to see that. Uh, did you? Did you see that? No, I see my thought process behind this is I'll wait to see it on Blu-ray at this point. Like I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that's how I kind of am with some of these movies. Unless I'm, if it looks interesting, okay, I'll give it that it looks interesting, and I might see it later on. You know, when it's on Netflix or something. Yeah. <laughs> but um, uh, there's there isn't a whole lot of films that I'm gonna be going to the theater for. Uh, unless it's something that I've been looking forward to for a while, and Maleficent. Just kind of wasn't one of those things. It wasn't super appealing to me. I'm not saying that it's terrible or anything, but it's just one of those things that I felt like I could pass up on. Yeah. It, uh, the soundtrack was good. I did hear it. I mean, oh, did you? Okay. yeah, I mean, because there was like a few songs on there. Right. Where I was like, um, well, one of the artists is uh, Lana Del Rey, and she's pretty no, okay. amazing. So I was like, you know, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll, I'll dive into the rest of the album because it okay. had like this eerie feel that was pretty good. All right. And cool. it was pretty good stuff. Well, at least. You know, the soundtrack is decent, so it gives you good. Uh, it didn't feel Disney. 
Which Disney? is kind of weird because, well, it did, but like grown up Disney. It was like oh, okay. Disney gotcha. is trying to like cater to the kids that were kids almost <laughs> in a way. Like, yeah. They were trying to like recapture old audiences with a new feel and like grow up with the people who watched Disney when they were kids. Mm-hmm. And the soundtrack was more, I mean, it wasn't an adult soundtrack, but it was a lot older in my opinion. Okay. It didn't feel like your tone, old Snow White. Yeah. I, yeah. It wasn't kind of like those classic golden age disney movies no and it was good it still had like it's really extremely good orchestral score but it was it was good i liked it i'll have to check it out sometime um in at number five we have the hunger games film oh well (laughs) (laughs) that makes sense wherever they if they're in the top 10 it makes sense and that one was at um that one was pretty close to maleficent too huh as far as box office goes wow um like 752 million is what i'm seeing here so Okay. Yeah, so I wonder if that's more or less than the previous Hunger Games. I don't know. They've been coming out uh, annually, right? Yeah. Um. So 2013. What was it called? Um. The three was. Like, I want to say if they're going along the lines of uh, the books, I want to say it was Catching Fire. But... Yeah, it was Catching Fire. So um, it was just Hunger Games, Catching Fire. And actually, like Mocking yeah, Mockingjay Part One made less than Catching Fire. Did it? Yeah, Catching Fire made eight hundred and sixty-four million, approximately eight, close to eight hundred and sixty-five million. Um, so yeah, that's that's quite a deficit. I mean, it's I not wonder huge, what the first did then. I don't know in that regard. Because my thing is, I feel like the series kind of went in a weird direction in mm-hmm. some parts from the books after the first one, and I wonder if people started to realize that was happening and just kind of. Lost steam. Like, does that happen in trilogies? You know, that's always been a big question with me. It, or like... it, it can. It can. Um, I think once you're coming up to a conclusion, though, I think a lot of people will come up and, you know, they'll, they'll uh, be excited for the last of the series. So, yeah. <laughs> they'll at least go to see it once, even if they just saw the first one. <laughs> like, yay, that was good. Uh, here I'm looking at it. The first Hunger Games made $691 million, Okay. Uh, worldwide box office. So, less than the second. Uh, less than the second and less than the third, uh, but the the um, Mockingjay, which came out last year, that made less than Catching Fire. Wow. Um, okay, in at number six, we have X-Men, Days of Future Past. Do, were you with... I, I wanted to go see that with your brother, but I don't know. Yeah, I didn't there. see that oh, one. Okay, all right. It was okay. <laughs> it was all right. I was expecting more of the old, like, classic X-Men cast. Yeah. You know, Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellen, um, all those people. And I uh, kind of didn't get that. I'm not a big fan. I'm just going to say I'm not I'm not a huge fan of the uh, the new cast. Okay. So, yeah, But, uh, you know, it was okay. It was an all right movie. It got high critical praise. That one made uh, $748 million at the box office, so right under Hunger Games. We got a lot of, we had a lot of movies kind of in the 700 range, so. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, everyone went to go it's like the everybody that went to go see all of these movies went, went to go see yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then a couple went people went to see Transformers. Yeah. <laughs> there was a few more people that went to go see The Hobbit and Transformers. People branching out a little bit. They um, went with Old Faithful over and over again. <laughs> yeah. Let it, uh and then number 7, we have Captain America 2, uh which was Captain America the Winter Soldier. You know uh, this may make a lot of people mad. Mm-hmm. After the first Captain America, I decided I, I'm done with that series, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> like you should have watched it, man. The, Captain, the Winter Soldier was one of my favorite movies. Of, was uh, last it? Year, yeah. Okay, yeah. I may give it a shot then, but I'm one of those ext- I'm one of those type of people that'll go out to a restaurant a hundred times and order the same type of food. Oh, okay. And uh, I just felt like Captain America wasn't kind of what I envisioned, because I haven't read a lot of comics of Captain America. Okay. But I put up in my head a different feel, that's all. Oh, okay. Like before I think, the movies that came out, I tried to watch uh, or read a little bit more, kind of brush up on my knowledge and yeah. do what I could. And the movies, like that voice in your head that kind of like narrates everything that's going on, mm-hmm. didn't even come close to the movies, in my opinion. So, oh, okay. I mean, I I'm think the original a Captain America movie, film, mm-hmm. yeah, it wasn't a bad film. <laughs> um, I think the original Captain America film, I don't think it was a great movie, and I think that's partially because of director. Issues. Okay. Joe Johnston, he's not my favorite director, in my opinion. Uh, he's not that great. But he made a competent movie with Captain America. And I think he did. Ca- there was kind of a capturing of uh, a feel of 
kind of the more new age uh, take on classic Captain America. Because yeah. Captain America is one of those heroes from a golden age of comics during the Second World War where he was like the embodiment of the good old US of A. Yeah. That's <laughs> Fighting the Nazis <laughs> and punching out Hitler and stuff like that. Um, and later on in kind of like the 80s and 90s when they brought Captain America back or even before that, um, they kind of re re-envisioned him uh, and his origins and kind of made him a little bit more down to earth. And I think that the original Captain America did a good job at capturing that. But still, like I said, with the with the director, it's, it's, parts were iffy. Some of it was a little bit corny, but you know, um, not 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 terrible in my opinion. I think Captain America Two completely yeah. outdid the first one, though. Okay. Excellent, excellent movie. Um, has to do with a lot of uh, you could almost consider it a conspiracy film. Um, oh. And I think it, it feels similar to movies like Enemy of the State or The Fugitive, where they're just on the run from government forces. You should really watch. I think you got you got to watch it before you see the Avengers, because I'm sure that'll have something to do with the Avengers. Yeah, because it there, probably will have some direct tie. Yeah, because there is there is something big that happens in that one. So okay. I'm, I'm not going to ruin it for you, but <laughs> I mean, people that have seen it that are listening to this are know what I'm going to be talking about, but. Um, if you haven't seen it yet and you don't know, definitely watch it. I think you should watch it before you see the Avengers, though, in case there's a tie-in, which I'm pretty sure there would be. But it pretty much changed the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> ah, this that's film. There's cool. some yeah, really big, really big stuff that went down. Uh, but yeah, definitely one of my favorites of the year. Um, and I was surprised that it made so little, but it was a it was a really good movie. Um, so that was number seven. Um, Number eight, we have The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. With 709 million. <laughs> Are you a fan of that no, particular my thing franchise? Is, I, I'm not even going to give it a shot. Like, I still have the original <laughs> series. Well, not, I'm, not, I'm calling it original to myself, but I still have, like, the Spider-Man series from when I was a kid What's in that, my what, head. Would that be the Sam Raimi yeah. versions with um, Tobey Maguire? Yeah. I like those, too. And I, so I, 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 yeah, I prefer them to... I'm not saying they're bad movies. They're probably great, and that's the thing. I'm willing to miss out on the greatness because of what I remember in my head. <laughs> yeah, you just kind of <laughs> want to preserve the old feelings. I got, I got you. Um, I've seen them both, uh, The Amazing Spider-Mans. My honest opinion, I don't like them as good as the Sam Raimi films. Um, I don't like the actor <laughs> that plays okay. Peter Parker, um, and I, I don't really like the direction. They're kind of taking keys from the Ultimate series. Okay. And uh, the Ultimate Series, I just, it, it, I don't like it as much as classic Spider Man, like the actual Amazing Spider Man comic series. Ah, uh, um, I see. Ultimate is kind of edgier. Has it deals with Peter as a kind of like an outcast teen. He seems more like, I don't know, emo, <laughs> as opposed to being nerd. Instead of being like nerd outcast, he's kind of yeah. like this social outcast and. It just takes a different tone, and the fact that he's so young as well, it, it, I mean, it, it changes the feel of the movie for sure. Uh, but, yeah, I know people that love these films, so I'm not going to criticize them too heavily, but not my personal preference. Yeah, I, I've been hearing that. Like, the younger generation loves it because they... I'm sure, yeah. And I'm like, that's awesome. And, like, I'm glad that they have something to connect with with that, but it's just not for me. Here's and, the thing, though, as I love... Uh, the character Spider-Man. He's one of my favorite superheroes. Yeah. And I grew up reading the amazing Spider-Man, the classic Spider-Man, the original. Not, okay. Not, uh, not this new stuff like the superior or even offshooting comic series like spectacular or ultimate or things like that. Um, so I, I don't want to say that Raimi, Sam, Ra the Ra Sam Raimi films completely captured the feel of the original, but I think they were closer to that kind of style. Okay, and I just I just appreciate that a little more um, than kind of a, a newer age Spider-Man. So, just my personal thoughts. So, moving on in at number nine, we have Dawn of the Planet of the Apes with seven hundred and eight million at box office, so very close to Amazing Spider-Man, which had seven hundred and nine. Right on. Did you see that one? No, I heard no. it was amazing though. I thought it was good. I mean, I I enjoyed it. I I enjoyed it more than the original one with uh, not the original reboot. 
Oh, I was going to say, like, the <laughs> <Yeah>. original. <laughs> that was a good movie. We saw that one, right? Yeah. Yeah, we did. We saw it together. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I like the I like the original Planet of the Apes, and then all the sequels. Eh, I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of. And then there was that Tim Burton reboot, and that was like, eh. <laughs> That was fun. I like the Tim Burton ones. They were fun. They were fun movies at it the just, very it least. It was just one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the one where with Mark Wahlberg, right? Yes, yeah. Okay, it was a fun movie, I should say. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking of the... Okay, so there's... You might be thinking of one of the sequels from... Or you, maybe even the, the reboot reboot. Okay, with, with I think Franco. I may be thinking of... It. Yeah, that's the one I'm thinking about with James Franco. Okay, yeah. Um, that one was... It was fun, but it wasn't great. It was I didn't think it was... I, yeah, I didn't think it was all that interesting, um, but it was okay. I, but Dawn of the Planet of the Apes was really starting to pick up steam with the particular world and story. Um, so I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. I mean, not a whole lot to talk about on it, but... I thought it was pretty good. So nice to see it in the top 10. <laughs> um, what should have been number one on the list. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> right. uh, number 10. Yeah, I'm surprised that this one isn't higher. But um, also another one of my favorite movies, Interstellar. Nice. $672 million at the box office. I'm uh, surprised it's so low, honestly. I'm surprised as well because Nolan is a big name nowadays. <laughs> uh, He's earned it. He's earned it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that 672 is chump change or anything, but no, it's it's a decent. Yeah, living. <laughs> but I mean, just from my personal viewpoint, I think it's a better movie than some of these other ones on the list. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I mean, it's not going to be something that's going to reach all audiences, so I understand that. However, I do think it deserves a little more. Uh, did you see it? No, I still haven't. And okay. the reason I'm holding off on it is because I realized that it's going to be one of those things like Inception. I didn't watch it for like the first, yeah. what, six months after it came out. But then I watched it every day <laughs> after that. Like I After we, watched, yeah, we yeah, watched it. Yeah, we watched it. I watched it every yeah. day. Every yeah. day. That was back when we used to do movie night all the time. Yeah. Oh, we watched Inception, which we got to do. That's what I was planning on doing. Uh, I was bringing it over and uh, watching Interstellar. But. And then I got drunk, and then <laughs> it ruined the weekend. <laughs> True story. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> but, you what know, a wild with, weekend that was. But with Christopher Nolan, what happens is he makes these cult classics like um, uh, in, uh, The Prestige. I was going to use that one as the first example. Mm -hmm. That only did 109. Yeah, Prestige did not make a whole lot of money. But every single person I know who's seen that movie is like, oh, man. It's, a, really it's an amazing movie. It, it's, it's a really good film. <laughs> And then you have um, uh, Memento, another one. Memento may not is, have been super huge. No, not not at all. Um, in fact, I think it's still classified as an independent film. Okay, right on. Uh, so not making the big bucks, but it's it's also a really good, really good film. Um, yeah, I, I'm just I'm a, I'm a fan of Nolan. I know there's a ton of hype, and maybe maybe people think you know or think he's um, doesn't deserve as much credit. <laughs> Meh. Just because, uh, because because of his popularity with the Batman films, yeah. However, I think he's an awesome director, and I'm not just hopping on a bandwagon. I after I've seen all of his films, and I legitimately think he's one of the best directors uh, currently making films. And um, Interstellar is no exception. I don't think it was as good as previous films like Inception or The Prestige, outside of the Batman series. Uh, however, I think it was a really solid story. I think there were moments that were that really kind of engrossed you in the film. Very intense. The soundtrack was amazing. Uh, Hans Zimmer again doing the doing what the he does. Soundtrack. <laughs> oh, no, man, he went above <laughs> and beyond with this one. It doesn't sound like anything he's done before. It, but it, uh, visually, I mean, it's so memorable. If you if you watch the scenes in that movie, I mean, there's going through the. The I, I don't know if they call it the Stargate, but it, it reminds me. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of 2001: A Space Odyssey. At the uh, end, when um, the whole film, the whole film, oh, has the similar, whole thing. Yeah, the whole film has similar pacing. It's a little bit more. Uh, I guess you could call it Hollywood, where there's more a bit more drama and there's a bit more character relation than a Kubrick film. <laughs> okay, yeah, <laughs> just an average everyday Kubrick film. But a lot of the themes, a lot of the pacing. Um, a lot of the stuff that happens is very reminiscent of 2001, and I know you're also a 
Yeah, I love that movie. Well, yeah, yeah, movie's so, good. Yeah, when you see Interstellar, I think um, I think you you two will kind of find that there's some similarities there. It's almost like uh, Nolan's take uh, if he did, if he did his own version of 2001. Is, is okay. what I feel like. Yeah. But yes, amazing visuals. Um, I mean, going through, I mean, some of the set locations uh, that they picked were just perfect. Uh, going through things like the Stargate, seeing the black hole is it, it's very memorable. <laughs> so one of my favorite films. Um, and I don't know, that's, that's it for the top ten, and I'm not sure. It, it's hard to pick a favorite. Because um, I was just, I think, uh, with, the, with the big three, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain America, Winter Soldier, and Interstellar, like, were kind of top in there. But they're all such different movies. Yeah. And then Godzilla's kind of like sub. I, th- I think I like those three a little bit better, but I also like Godzilla. But it's hard to say. Uh, they're just uh, such different that I, I don't know if I could really pick one out of those three. But that's just from my standpoint. So. I would say, fun. honestly, like, that is tough. Like out of the year, that it's it's hard to pick. It, it was, really is. Yeah, it was a pretty good. It was a pretty good year for movies. Not not the biggest year, but I think there was definitely some home runs. So I will say, like out of everything I've seen, um, whether it be older than 2014 mm-hmm. and in 2014, there were none of these movies where I didn't feel like I wasted any time. Like yeah, with uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, Godzilla, all those movies, I felt like it was really it was a great time. And yeah. I think that's at the end of the day, that's what they want you to have. Pretty much, know? yeah. So, I, I and, and I feel the same way. I'm, you know me. I'm a, I'm a film guy. Uh, I I have big collection of movies, um, and I, I like to go to the theaters. But I want to go to the theaters and you know watch something that's I'm going to find entertaining. And uh, I think I think with last year, aside from maybe Transformers, <laughs> um, I think that uh, last year was a really good year for films, and I, I didn't uh, not enjoy uh, any of the ones that I had seen. So, uh, pretty good stuff. I'm I'm happy with with how uh, 2014 turned out. GG. All right, so let's move on to uh, television. Television. Yep. Uh, television series going on. Um, I'm not huge in a TV, but there's definitely some shows that I've been really enjoying. Um, you had a few picked out. Uh, what What have you been watching lately that that you've been uh, you've been liking? Well, I think if you are under rock, everyone knows that uh, Mad Men is in part two of the final season. Final season. Yep. Yeah, man. And that's kind of a big deal. It's kind of exciting, though, because I feel like if they would have kept the show going on much longer... I think it's time. I th- yeah. I, I think they picked a decent time um, it's, to start ending the show and winding it down. Don, it's it's about time Donnie, <laughs> Donnie, Donnie closes the curtain on this to operate. No, but it, it's, uh, it's, a solid, it's a solid TV show, and they're ending it right like Breaking Bad. I'm glad that like AMC is building that rapport of ending shows when they're at their best, you know? Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Leaving us wanting more, but not giving it to us, so that we we're happy. Because in the end, it's it's one of those things I'm really excited about with Mad Men. Because if it's anything like Breaking Bad, it'll end in a perfect way, and you'll be happy. You'll be I, I feel happy. that way too. I think I think AMC knows how to how to work their shows. Um, and um, with I I'll say that I haven't watched the any of the last season yet. What are they on seven? Yeah, seven's the last yeah. one, so don't um, don't spoil anything for me. <laughs> yeah, I'll refrain from spoilers. <laughs> um, this is cause I'm I'm kind of wait. I was gonna binge watch on the first part there, and then just kind of pick it up <laughs> afterwards. So but, <clears throat> yeah, here right. we go. <laughs> However, um, I'm a big fan of the show, um, and I have watched it pretty much from the start. Uh, and it's I mean it's been a it's been a crazy ride. <laughs> Interestingly enough, I think you recommended it to, initially. We had like I think slightly I discussed it. You're like, dude, you should. And I was like, ah, two looks too slow paced. Because you know what I think it was, was uh, L.A. It was L.A. Noir that Rockstar game. Yeah. Remember when you got it? Um, and it was, yep, I do. I, I told you about the actors in there because of of its period piece and its setting, that a lot of them were from Mad from Mad Men, and I think that's how we first got started gotten uh, talking about it because L.A. Noir came out not too long after uh, Mad Men had started up. 
Yeah. And it was really interesting to see even like a lot of these sub characters kind of have like these main roles <laughs> in that game. But um, but yeah, I do remember talking us chatting about Mad Men before. Um, and I I've watched it. I I probably jumped on board maybe halfway through the first season. But it's such it's such a good show that yeah I've 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 pretty much kept up with it. Yeah. To its finish. So, and I, I I agree with you. I think I think they picked a good time, and I think they'll probably will. They're not gonna they're not gonna leave you hanging on the end of the season, feeling like you missed out on anything. I think uh, at least I'm hoping. <laughs> but I think they will be able to kind of close out this show in a good way. And, you know what uh, surprises me is mm-hmm. that their ratings went down. Um. Like before the end, yeah. Like, I mean, I'm that, surprised that happens with a uh, long running series. Yeah, I mean, you'll find it in anything, unless, unless the um, the final parts of the season is really intense. Like, and I'm I'm kind of thinking another AMC show. I'm thinking Breaking Bad here. Yeah, <laughs> unless it's really intense, you're not gonna get quite those ratings. Mad Men isn't that kind of show. No, it's it's more of a refined person's it, a little bit, yeah. You can kind of think think of it as kind of like a refined show. It's it's fairly tame, but Most definitely, and it is a drama. But I think they they know how to write these stories and kind of get you hooked in there. And um, it may not be the biggest bang, so maybe that's why people are dropping off. But I'm sure that it'll it'll end up fine and uh, be you know have a decent closeout. So yeah. Um. All right. Other so, things. Mad Men. Yeah. Anything um, else? The Empire. That show just it it was it felt like a train, <laughs> like that was in another town and it was going real fast, right? Mm, yep. And then like it comes into your town going fast and it just picks up even more speed. <laughs> it's just like the type of show. And I don't know. I've always kind of enjoyed um, the acting of Terrence Howard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like I saw him in Crash, and that was like weird to see him in that after yeah. seeing him in uh. Iron Man, like yeah, to see him like Iron as Man. like a bubbly ish, like don't do that type <laughs> of guy to just go into like this dark person. Mm-hmm. And then in the Empire, man, like that show, it, it's one of those shows that I find because without blowing plot points, because that's really what brings it out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those who are listening that watch the show, it's 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 like it's showing you the dark side of like the music entertainment. Mm-hmm. industry and he really knows how to magnify it in like such a perfect way to the point where it's like did you actually do this like <laughs> it's weird man it's one of those shows where i've i've only watched about three or four or five episodes and i'm already hooked like wow, okay. i'm not a binger anymore but oh, yeah. it's definitely one of those shows where i see myself perhaps binging on it and just <laughs> knocking it it's like it feels like a soap opera honestly no yeah it really feels I'm like sure, a soap i'm sure i'm sure it's a better quality though <laughs> I've not seen it myself, but it does it does look fairly interesting. And uh, what about you? What TV shows have you been dwelling into? Oh, uh, well, I've been all about capes, <laughs> costumed heroes, and uh, cowls. The cape oh, and yeah. the cowl. Yeah. Uh, well, do any of these guys have cowls? Well, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Actually, none of these guys have capes either, so I guess that doesn't yeah. even work. But comic book uh, related TV shows. Um, the DC shows, um, three big ones that are out right now, uh, Gotham on Fox, and then on the CW you have both The Arrow and uh, The Flash. Uh, and then Marvel's new series, Daredevil. Um, yep, Netflix. Yep, on Netflix. Uh, Gotham I've been really enjoying. Um, I don't think it's quite as high a caliber as I would say The Flash and, and Arrow. However, it's a very different premise. Okay. It doesn't take... Uh, obviously, if you're if you're doing a show about GCPD in Gotham City, you're you're not gonna be you're focusing on Jim Gordon, <laughs> and you're not gonna it's not gonna be about Batman. And at the time period that it takes place, it's before it's way before uh, Batman is active. Uh, Bruce Wayne is a child. I think he's supposed to be ten in the series, which they follow. That's a very weird approach. A, a little bit, yeah. And I remember arguing with some other comic book fan friends of mine that. It's based off of um, a comic series called Gotham Central. And I've read a few of those. It's a very good series. Basically, it follows characters in the GCPD, but Batman is already active at the time. Um, so okay. you, have, you have a lot of the seasoned villains and some of the minor guys and how, how the cops of Gotham deal with these crazy people, basically. 
And that's pretty much what the show premise is like. However, putting it in the time period that it's at, it kind of, in my opinion, debilitates it a little bit because, sure, you see the origins of some of these crazy people, but you're not going to have, you know, the big names going on. <laughs> you're not. They've introduced people like the Joker and the Penguin and stuff like that, but um, you don't you don't see them at what you're um, familiar with because they're so young. <laughs> Most of these people are either children or very young adults, like in early 20s and stuff like that. So it's a weird approach. However, I do find it's it's very entertaining. Um, it feels like it takes a step up from the classic cop show approach. So uh, I do like that one quite a bit. Also, The Arrow and The Flash, a uh, very good series on CW. They, uh, The Flash... It's oh yeah, <laughs> still on its first season, but very good. Like right off the bat, you know they they know what they're doing and what they want to do. Um, and the Arrow, I believe, is on its third season. Is it already on its third mm-hmm. season? Yeah. All right, good. Yeah, time flies, but they they've got a definite beat on how they want to do it now. I think Arrow started out kind of rocky. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Um, I remember watching like a few episodes because I was like, this is kind of a cool guy to go with. Mm-hmm. And I don't remember people being so hyped about it, but now it's like ridiculous. People, oh, yeah. it's like nicotine. Yeah. <laughs> They're addicted. It's definitely, it's definitely picked up a fan base. Uh, I think a lot of people that have watched it from the the early onset days are kind of sticking with it. Um, it has its ups and downs, but overall, Arrow's a really solid show, and The Flash as well. I think, I think they've really got something special with those those two series, and it's really, it's really fun to watch. Um, and even now they're, they're starting to cross over with those two particular series and they could be expanding. So even more to look forward to. That's cool. Yeah. It's really neat. And then, uh, Marvel's Daredevil on Netflix, uh, and that came out. I watched, I, I spaced it out. I don't know if people like watched, binge watched it, uh, over the course of like a day. <laughs> Uh, all 13 episodes. <laughs> Netflix is dangerous, man. It is dangerous. And you know what sucks more about that is that, you know, when you go into work after the weekend, <laughs> everybody's going to be talking about it and how it ends and stuff. And you got to, like, sh- shut your ears and punch people in the face. It's like, shut up. <laughs> You're like, no, please, please. No spoilers. But that's, you know, that's that's just how Netflix does it. And I think it's kind of cool that they release all the episodes out uh, in one go. Uh, you could decide how you want to approach uh, watching the season. But I thought Daredevil was really, really good. Uh, Did you happen to watch any of that? No, I didn't watch Daredevil. I mostly had been spending my time watching um, Arrow, honestly. Like, it just kind of felt really good. And I don't know how to put it, like, simply, but it kind of – I'm not saying it's similar, Mm -hmm. but it kind of made me want to watch it kind of like Smallville did in its early seasons. Like, Mm, yeah. In its early stuff. It just had a good vibe to it. It was fun and exciting and yeah, stuff like that. So I, between that, I said I was going to try to brush up and do some research and mm-hmm. kind of get my splash around a little bit. And The Flash and Arrow were pretty good shows, I must yeah. admit. Like, they held their own in a I way I didn't think they would. They they really do, and they, they really have a good beat going on with them. I think Marvel's uh, Daredevil... Um. Is, is fairly similar to Arrow in its design. It's a little bit, given that it's not on a basic network TV or even cable, they can take a little, things a little bit further. Um, oh. <laughs> you, you do see uh, there's there's a bit more, it's a bit more gratuitous in terms of violence and stuff like that uh, than Arrow and uh, The Flash, but I think it's it has a similar kind of design to Arrow. Uh, more so uh, out of all of these television series and it does kind of portray the development of a superhero without phenomenal powers i mean he's got powers in his own regard but yeah uh basically he's still like a very physical uh hero um who doesn't have super strength or can fly and stuff like that and it, it does feel really similar to something like arrow so i think i think if you've watched that and enjoyed it you're probably going to like daredevil uh but we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that we want to move it into our next topic then yes sir okay our next topic is going to be dc and marvel and what they're doing in regards to tv and film so this is a big one uh both these companies 
you could kind of say are still starting out and getting the ball rolling. Um, Marvel definitely has its foot in the ground as far as films go. Yep. And uh, DC, same similar circumstances, but with television. And the TV. Uh, they're both 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 of them are getting are crossing over. They're both getting into TV and film. So it's uh, it's interesting to see what's uh, what's developing with them. Um, yeah. Let's let's talk a little bit about DC first. Uh, we were just talking about their television shows. It's like there's so much to talk about, but what is it? What is it that works with DC? Um, what do you think works with them? Why why is their shows so enthralling and uh, you know fun to watch? Personally, I don't know if 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 it's going to be disagreed or agreed upon. Is mm-hmm. I feel like DC does good, very, 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 very good in the department of something that can be more consistent, like okay. weekly or um, or like frequently, because mm-hmm. character development is a big deal with DC. I've noticed that like in the games and in the television mm-hmm. stuff that I have seen, and as far as um, like just pretty much every in like I'm when I speak of television I'm talking about like uh, the animated stuff and everything like that. Yes, it uh, DC feels animated like universe. It's always felt better in television, and the thing that really works is it. It's like the villains make more sense when you don't have to only limit them to one episode. Mm-hmm. The main character you become more attached to and have more fun with, and when they span over more periods of time. And I think that's kind of why they succeed so well in a consistent weekly type thing, because they can leave more detail in there that they would have to take out in a film, in my opinion. I, I do think that's true. Um, I think you still find a lot of character development in like Marvel. Um, however, a lot of the Marvel series, um, even though they have a lot of character development, it, it seems like DC has such a more vast and, and deeper, kind of richer character building uh, plots and stories throughout the, yeah. throughout the course of the series. Um, and one of the reasons why I think DC, the at least for their television shows go, works so good is because they stick close to the source material. They do flesh out these characters in similar fashions and bring out a lot of the same attributes that you see from the characters in the comics. Um, I'm not, that's not saying that they're not taking liberties, but um, with a lot of the villains that they have, with a lot of the heroes, they are making strides to get it as close as they can without limiting their creative purpose to the source material. And I, I think that that pleases fans, for one, but also since you have such great stories out of DC and you have a, more time to work with as opposed to a movie with a television series, if you stick close to, to the source material like that, you can bring out like really good stories and really good characters out of, out of uh, these franchises. Most definitely. I, well, I, this is kind of a side-ish thing that kind of just came to mind, but you know what kind of gets me, too, with DC is... Um, they're really, 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 really good at just, I don't know if it's the, if the people like communicate with each other or they feel like it's in that zone, but Mm -hmm. they just have like a good job of making a show feel comfortable. Like for people like myself that I'm not too into like the flash. I mean, I enjoy him and stuff, but I haven't like watched much of him, read much of him or seen much of him. Mm -hmm. It made me want to watch the show. And I feel like they're good at captivating someone who can come at any point in the show and say, okay, I'm interested in this. This seems like they have like the the surface stuff covered extremely well, mm-hmm. and then they also have something that keeps the people who know what they're watching in even better, you know. So yeah. I, I think that's kind of a big deal. Um, I I agree. Person. I think I I find it interesting that they take the approach. I mean, for one reason, you have to assume that they want to have the big guys for the films. Yeah, because that's what's going to make them a lot of money. But I do think it's interesting that they take these series on uh, superheroes that you don't see too often. I mean, the general public, I mean, now everyone knows the Green Arrow from the Arrow television series. But prior to that, I mean, if you asked around, you weren't going to know too many people or hit too many people that, you know, know about the uh, Green Arrow. (laughs) And then the same with The Flash. It's like they know who The Flash is, but they don't really know the character. Uh, it's not as familiar as with other DC properties like uh, Superman, like with Batman, like with Wonder Woman. 
Yeah. Um, it's, it's just not as familiar characters. But I do think it's interesting that they take sort of these quote-unquote lesser-known uh, characters and build a whole series after them. And uh, I, I think that that also attributes to it because it's something... It, it's similar to what we've seen, but not exactly the same as what we've seen before in the past. And um, with that, uh, just having these such great writing uh, with the stories and having these long overarching story arcs underlying plots and things like that the they kind of incorporate these into the series as well yeah and I just think it makes for a for a good experience um, if you've watched the arrow series and even the flash series you, you can kind of see how every season has its central villain and while not every episode is focused on that particular villain, you know what the end game is going to be. Yeah, and, it, you know, that's what I'm like. So that's what shocks me. Like that's what I think is kind of neat. Like that development is mm-hmm. unreal, man. That development is like top tier in my opinion. It's like who thinks of that type it's, of stuff? I mean, it's very fun for a television <laughs> series. I mean, because you have, I mean, you have these villains that you start off with, and they're there at the beginning, so you know that they're going to be a big threat and they'll come in you know in certain episodes and you'll see them fight and there's going to be conflict with them and then you know at the end of this of the season in particular there's going to be a you know there's something to look forward to there's going to be the big final showdown uh with arrow you had merlin as a central villain in the first season the second season you had deathstroke or slade wilson uh, who's one of my favorite characters out of the DC universe. He's a very cool villain, and I'm, I like the way that they did him in, in the series. And in this one, uh, this third season here of Era, we have Ra's al Ghul. Ra's al Ghul. Yeah, so... Uh, you know, Deathstroke was kind of weird for me. Oh, yeah? I'm not going to lie. Like, I mean, he's a neat guy, but I was like... I kind of was interested, and I did some like background information. And while they did like an extremely good job, I was like, who picks... Deathstroke is like the main dude. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. that's kind of a bold approach. Like, sort you could of. go with like the name brand Raza Ghoul. You know what I mean? Or yeah. pick someone that everyone has a general. But they went with Deathstroke, and I thought that was kind of cool. Deathstroke. That's a, it's yeah, it's, it's a very good villain for the second s- season. I think it's a good villain because Deathstroke is one of those people that doesn't have, and not not that any of these central villains have, but he doesn't have powers or abilities outside of. What can His be killing done? Skills. Yeah, yeah. In the hu- assassin. Yeah, yeah. Indefinite human attributes. So I think it's cool to see a hero like the Green Arrow fight off against somebody that doesn't have powers, which is what they've been doing. Somebody that's going to be on level, somebody that he has to surpass uh, in skill and ability. Um, and granted, they did give they did give him powers with that Mirakuru uh, in the second season, but they took that away by the end of it, so it didn't matter. <laughs> um, but either way, I, I do think they do a very good job at, at picking the characters. They do a good job with the casting. Um, they do a good job with the writing. And it just, by when you watch the seasons in full and then you come all the way to the end, it feels like it's been such a such an experience and it's only been one season of you know 22 23 episodes <laughs> yeah they, that's so cool i like that man that's like one of the most hype things but yeah. like <laughs> 23 <laughs> you have like an opportunity 23 times to just shock people you know? <laughs> like, yeah pretty much yeah <laughs> um and then with the with dc sort of taking keys from Marvel here. They've begun with their new series, The Flash. They've been begun crossing over the characters. And it's really fun. I mean, as I, it, it, there's not even a reason to be excited otherwise, uh, other than you just get to see, like, these two characters that you usually see on their own come together. And it's, like, just from that, there's there could be, like, pure excitement just from combining, you know, the two shows like that. <laughs> So I think I think it's fun every time they do a crossover with Flash. The Flash will be in Arrow uh, or vice versa. And, That's pretty uh, cool. Yeah, they've been bringing in new characters like the Atom, who potentially may be getting his own series later on. Um, and they've been building this connected universe, which I think is a big selling point for Marvel and their films. But huge. Yeah, uh, but this connected universe. 
that gets people excited and that's going to bring bring people to the TVs to start watching these because they want to see these characters that they know come together and and this awesome superstar special. <laughs> so I just those are a lot of the points that really work with the DC shows. Uh just production values, casting, writing, um connected universe, sticking close to the source material. It all brings it together in this kind of neat little package. And uh, just makes makes those shows fun to watch. I think too. Like, I always wonder, like, what's the next big? Like, they're gonna connect Marvel and DC together, put it <laughs> in a movie and on TV, and they're just gonna take over. Yeah, when like, Dis- when Disney buys DC. Oh God! <laughs> it's just a matter of time. At it's this, just point. a matter of time. Yeah, pretty much. There has to be a law against that. Like, there. I think there is, isn't there? Like, there has to be competitors to companies. Like, you can't own. Ever, you can't own everything. Oh. <laughs> Oh, anything, anything could be done. <laughs> My goodness, because that would not be, that would not be, the monopoly would just be insane. Everything goes when, into Mar- when, into when Disney's Google and pocket. Disney take over the world, and then God. it'll just be that's the competitor right there. Google, <laughs> Google to Disney. Goodness, man! Yeah, two powerhouses coming together at last. I realized like how big of a hand Disney had over in just business in general, and it was shocking. Like, pretty much, it scared me. I was like, <laughs> Disney has its hand in everything media related, like everything. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's scary. It's, it's scary to <laughs> what what the future may bring. <laughs> the Walt Disney Company. All right. So let's talk about let's talk about Disney's purchase. Uh, let's talk about the Marvel and and uh, their films. What works for them? What doesn't at this point in the <laughs> film industry? Like, what doesn't work for them? They've, I mean, it, it almost seems like every everything that that uh, Marvel Studios puts out is a hit, pretty much. I'm, I'm gonna say this with very big confidence that the dry the well's gonna run dry at some point. All good things come to an end. But for right now, they mm-hmm. they ironed out the kinks in it, and they're making one of the greatest like stretches that I've seen in a while with film, like with what they've done. And I I don't feel the, the funny thing about it too, is I don't feel like, like they're really overdoing it. Like not, not a lot of them, except in my humble opinion, Iron Man three, which I didn't think was the greatest thing ever. Um, it, it it seems like every, even the sequels, regardless of how many there've been, it doesn't feel like they're milking it as much as it could be. The quality still seems to, either surpass the previous ones or stays consistent i think the one thing that i think works for them is mm-hmm. they have a, such a high standard now that they can cast people who are well relatively unknown and it still come out to be a really good film Pretty and much, that makes yeah. me extremely happy because i mean with iron man they use like for the early films they use big budget stars and they kind of like made sure that they lined everything up right and bit, now yeah, I feel yeah. like it doesn't matter what studio you're in in the Marvel division, mm-hmm. you're going to make a kick-butt film that everyone's going to like because of that standard. And I think that that was smart the way they did it. They like they snowballed into something that happened really good, and I'm really happy with that. Well, Marvel has such a repertoire now that, I mean, anything that they're going to put out, people are at least going to give it a shot. <laughs> Most definitely. So... Yeah, it's it's a pretty big deal with a lot of their things. Um, I, I do think that they do a very good job with casting. Um, and so, some people might consider it surprising, but even unknown people um, that aren't in the biggest roles, they, they, they know how to choose them. They, they're not going right for the A-listers. Yeah. Um, and they know, they know how, who to pick for their characters. Uh, and I think that's that's a, one of the reasons why why they're so successful is because they could pick people that embody the characters that they're supposed to portray, and it's it's really neat to see, similar to DC, see how they stick fairly close to the source material uh, for their films, and they could pick people that fit those characters to a T, and it really does seem like comic books coming to life pretty much as cheesy as it sounds yeah <laughs> it is it, it's like all the stuff that you watched on tv as far as cartoons as a kid or read in the comic books it's really nice to see it in in a in a big budget film format and i think with disney's marvel studios 
they've been able to do it unlike any any previous films have prior to I think Iron Man started it all so like prior to that so uh, I, I feel like they've done a really good job in kind of building this universe I think they did something smart too that I don't I think it's small but it that some people may take for granted at it in a, in a, with within reason is they booked movies all the way like mm-hmm. for a while and I think that's smart because it builds hype like a lot of hype to book like to tell you what they're going to do all the way up to 2019 oh, like yeah. that is so cool and it's just it's kind of just now that they've started doing that because they didn't for phase one and phase two at least of the yeah they of surprised Phase, us yeah they didn't really give us a roadmap <laughs> to what they're doing but now we kind of ha- expect there to be films and now they're saying well this is what's been in the works and a lot of these films this wasn't something that was slapdash together within no. a, a couple months of development a lot of this stuff has had a lot of thinking behind it and what surprises me is there's two movies that are a ways away that I don't want to miss. So I know I have to keep watching the ones that are up just because you don't want to miss like what's going on. But like uh, Doctor Strange, I really, oh, really yeah. want to see that coming out way later. And yeah. then um, I like there wasn't much about it, but people like I've talked to briefly were saying that Inhumans is going to be pretty cool, too. Inhumans is, is probably going to be pretty interesting. Um, it's sort of a weird comic series to take. Uh, because of its sort of lesser known status. Yeah. Uh, however, I think it's a, it's a really interesting concept, and uh, it'll be exciting to see see them kind of develop characters in that. And I'm a fan. I, I've um, watched uh, Benedict Cumberbatch and um, Sherlock Holmes. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, since the beginning. So that's, I mean, I'm sure most people are familiar with him for that. That's why I was um, excited. <laughs> I was yeah. like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so when they cast him as Doctor Strange, I said, oh, that's perfect. For for a fully developed Doctor Strange character, I don't know how he's going to pull off because Doctor Strange was as just like a guy before he got his powers. was kind of like lackadaisical almost. <laughs> okay, sort so of pulling after half-hearted that. Half-hearted and not, yeah. not really caring about humanity, but then to become like one of the defenders you know, of humanity and becoming sort of this, this almost sort of regal, uh, uh, sort of regal superhero is, uh, I think, I think he could pull it off. So I'm, I'm excited to see him in that, but, but, uh, yeah, developing a lot of these films, they just have a lot of development time underneath them. Um, great writing with them. Uh, again, similar to DC, uh, but Marvel started at first <laughs> as, um, they have their connected universe, yeah. Uh, obviously, they have all these heroes in their individual films, but then it all leads up into the Avengers. Maybe not directly. Um, seems like a lot of the individual films for the Phase 2 of, of Avengers uh, have had more to do with maybe Avengers 3. Seems like it's leading up to. Okay. Uh, just from what I've been seeing. But, you know, uh, it, it's still cool to see, see them all grouped together. <laughs> Uh, by the time the Avengers comes out, so it, it's it's really neat watching that. And then they're just a uh, Marvel has found the rare, perfect blend of humor and action. Yeah, I mean these. I didn't even think about that, but that's very true. <laughs> these these films are they're legitimately funny most of the time. I mean there might be a couple jokes I don't crack up laughing at but they're legitimately funny they're fun to watch but they still they're still action intensive and they're still enthralling enough for you to want to watch them but you get a good laugh out of them too and i can't think of like a whole lot of movies that do that so perfectly consistently (laughs) consistently blending in so much humor um but not not sacrificing the story or the plot of the of the movies uh, and and not overtaking even action sequences. So I, I think they they've they've got a good thing going, and it's surprising that they've been able to do it after all these movies so consistently. Like you said, it's but, impressive. Yeah, but the Marvel movies are definitely fun to watch. So um, there's just a lot of, a lot of good stuff going for them, and a lot of stuff in the future too. So it's it's pretty cool. Okay, so. Why don't we move on and kind of we we've expressed the uh, the highlights and the the good things about these series. What about what doesn't work? 
<sighs> so I I'm gonna just say like, and we're gonna start off with DC. Yeah, yeah with let's, DC. Let, let's talk about DC <laughs> and what doesn't work with them. This is just in my humble opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like in the movie department specifically, mm-hmm. one thing that kind of leads me to believe that they may not have the success they're looking for is the aside from like I don't I don't really know exactly how to say it, but aside from the Batman series for myself, I feel like the movies weren't great. They didn't. They always feel real. It seems like that general same theme. It feels real dark. It mm-hmm. feels real dramatic. They always go for that drama feel in all their movies. And I'm not saying it's bad, but um, I've seen, I believe, two of the um, Superman movies, and they both kind of okay. just didn't feel on point to me. Even the newest one. I mean, it was good. Don't yeah. get me wrong. It was good. But it didn't feel like when Man, I come Man out of, of the Steel. theater. Man of Steel, yeah. yeah that's what it doesn't about, okay. feel like when I come out of a theater from a marvel movie where i'm laughing i'm like did you do you remember this part it didn't feel like it had that healthy balance we were just talking about it always yeah. seems to be lopsided i agree and the thing that started that off was uh the first batman film from christopher nolan and here's the thing and i agree completely i i i love the nolan films uh for the batman series i'm sure you do too yeah a uh, really big fan of those. The dark and dramatic feel is Batman. It, it it really brings a lot of the, particularly the Silver Age comics, a lot of the comics that you saw for Batman in the 70s and the 80s. It really brings that feel in, in into the uh, into the films. It, it has kind of like this dark, moody atmosphere. But even the Nolan films, they weren't completely dark. No. However, I, I think I think the film studios, Warner Brothers, and Legendary Pictures, they kind of have like this consensus that, well, this is what worked for Batman, so this is what has to work for our other properties as well. But it's like you can make, you can make Batman feel dark and realistic, but you can't you can't drag those same tones over into say Superman because he's a completely different hero. Yeah, I mean, constantly in the comics. Batman and Superman are considered polar opposites of how to go about being a superhero. That's and, what I was thinking, yeah. but you know, I didn't I don't know. It just it feels different. It feels different. But I agree. I I liked Man of Steel. I know I know there's a, a bit of controversy with it. You know, it seems like people are split. I liked Man of Steel fine. I don't think a lot of the tones fit. It should have been something closer to that for like the first Superman film in the seventies with Christopher Reeve. Yeah. If you, if you compare Man of Steel to something like that, definitely it doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it should feel a little lighter um, and less dreary <laughs> that Man of Steel was. Yeah, it felt like a. It felt like sad. Not sad, but that's the vibe you get from it. A little you know? bit. Like, yeah. You just get like a like a casting over with that movie. And yeah, yeah. there's there's a lot of tragic events that happen in in Superman's life, but. Really, a lot of it is him overcoming that and yeah. becoming the hero that he is. And I think they they kind of more embrace the darker tones more than they should have. And uh, you know, trying to trying to take these realistic sort of tendencies with the uh, with the Superman, he, he is not realistic. He's he's the like a god among men. <laughs> no, he's Superman. <laughs> he's Superman. Yeah. So it's like you can't really. You can't really place it in the same tone and expect it to work. And uh, yeah, and it, it it feels like that might be the approach they're going for with their lineup of films. And I'm just not sure. It's 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 murky. Yeah. I don't, I don't have the fullest confidence in what they're able to do. But aside from that, and aside from the universe that they're doing, DC has doesn't have a good track record with their with their movies. Um. Thinking specifically over the past few years, stuff that hasn't been part of an intended shared universe, we had Jonah Hex and Green Lantern. Green Lantern was, it was interesting. <laughs> I mean, some people may one love way of putting it. it. I, they may I love it. I don't. I don't know about that. <laughs> but I felt like I don't know if people loved it. I don't know if it people liked it. It was a tad it. bizarre. It wasn't really. How do I say not good in my opinion without saying <laughs> right. not? 
<laughs> and they I think, did I think two, said didn't it. they? What? Green Lantern? No, they just no, did one. Just, I was going to say. There's just one Green Lantern. Yeah. No, the, the movie was basically a bomb. There's no way they would have done a second one. <laughs> I was just shocked that, I don't know. I, it, it just wasn't fun. It felt really, I don't even think they made their budget back on that movie, did they? Like, I, I think I think it actually bombed. I'm not, I'm not too sure, and I don't have the notes with me on that one in particular. I know Jonah Hex bombed like crazy. I don't even know that. <laughs> Goodness, I don't think I saw that one. Yeah, a lot of not not a lot of people did. So you're not you're not alone there. I I didn't, aside from me going out of my way to see it, but I didn't see it in theaters and I didn't pay for it. I didn't see it. <laughs> you um, went to a buddy's house who had it on. You're like, oh, wow. oh god. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, somebody was just streaming it, so I decided to watch it. But it was it was pretty bad, as people unanimously expressed. <laughs> I'm looking at its box. Its budget was forty-seven million, and it did ten. Uh, Jonah Hex, or yeah, okay. Jonah Hex. All right, yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, Jonah Hex was a big bomb. Um, so I mean, here's the problem: is unlike unlike their television series, it's like the exact opposite. They're not sticking close to the source material. They're they're not writing good scripts. It seems like these movies tend to go for style over substance. Just lots of explosions and action intense sequences and stuff like that without there being any anything to back it up. Um, a lot of... I don't know. I, I wasn't a big fan of the casting for any of those movies. Everything in Jonah Hex is wrong. I mean, when you have um, Megan Fox in a film... Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> She's a great actress. Oh, yes. Yes, she has... Very good assets <laughs> <laughs> to a film. She brings lots of assets to a movie. Oh yes, uh, as uh, in, indeed. Ding ding! <laughs> I went there. <laughs> Let's bring it back. Um, All but, right, yeah, it's like, boom. Yeah, so it's. I think um, I'm not too sure because the, these past couple films have not been good, uh, and it's a little worrying for their future plans to come out. So it's who knows who knows what it's gonna be like. I'm crossing my fingers and I'm gonna I'm gonna hope it's gonna be good, but it's hard to say. Now I'm gonna rag on the series a little bit, the television series. Okay. Because we pretty much got the films out of the way. I'm gonna, yeah. So not always, uh, and I think this is a bigger problem when Arrow was first starting out. But you have this network, the CW, which is famous for teen dramas. Yeah, and it seems to me like they tried to incorporate their stupid subplots and and character relationships into into my superhero shows. Now, how could they do that? <laughs> but you have you have. I mean, I, I don't know how much you've seen, but it 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 does feel like there's like this this kind of teen drama twinge that's that's in early Arrow and and still kind of throughout and a little bit in uh, the Flash. Yeah, now that you mention it, I kind of get that vibe. Yeah, yeah it's right. there. It's definitely there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just all sorts of girl problems and characters always have these wishy-washy sort of relationships with each other. People are all sides are always changing, and it's like sometimes that works in a in a superhero setting, but it's, it happens so consistently, and there's always this this sort of background uh this back feeling of will he won't he you know go out with so and so and it's like that's not what this it doesn't it, it feels like it's a conflict of interests and uh and that's really kind of the only flaw that's i feel is really big with those uh with those two shows in particular yeah i think if they got rid of that it'd be a lot better but there's they're so good now that it's it's hard to it's hard to you know pick off you pick on them for anything but I think I think CW is trying to drag them into their teen drama dirt. Right. <laughs> Next thing you know, it'll be like on Jerry Springer. <laughs> like they somehow. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, right. I feel like I mean I. It's a little tougher for me as like from the relatively more casual aspect of things, like mm -hmm. um, to kind of come in and bring. My my faults are usually like the things I think a lot of people see they just don't say you know. Yeah. Kind of like with the, but then there's like the more entrenched stuff like that, that it's prevalent if you think about it. Like I can definitely see there's 
they could leave out some things for sure. <laughs> <laughs> they could leave things that no one really cares about open. <laughs> That's yeah, yeah. I think we could leave it at that though. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Marvel. It's almost um, like an invert with Marvel and DC. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> it, it really is. It's it's so strange um, how how they've kind of worked themselves around. But yeah, Marvel's TV series, um, which they have two now, and one of them's relatively new. So Agents of Shield. Um, have you seen a little bit of that? Any of that? Tried. <laughs> And it wasn't for me, like, at all. I I wanted to like it, and I started watching it, and I watched it consistent. I probably watched half of the first season. Yeah. But, uh, it, it, yeah, yeah. Okay, so why why didn't didn't you like it? It was boring, like... Okay. It just, it didn't, I feel like... Cold hard truth. It just, it didn't entice me to finish. Like, I watched Mm -hmm. one or two episodes, and I was just bored. And that's the nicest way to put it. I just wasn't in, <laughs> into it. Like I just, I felt like everything that was in like all of the Marvel movies just was missing from the show. And they tried to kind of just get in a little too early to the television game. You know what I it's, mean? Like, yeah, I think they did. I think they got into the TV series without really knowing uh, what they were gonna do. And I think I think they suffered because of that. Um, it. It's supposed to be set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it just feels so disconnected. Like, you, okay, you get you get a you get tossed a bone every now and again. You have like this lame character from whatever some movie that played a two bit role, <laughs> and that's Pop in. you're like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> that's as much as you get from the show. You don't have any major events happening aside from a big one that happened in uh, Winter Soldier, which I don't want to spoil, uh, but it's like uh, there's there's not a whole lot that makes it feel connected to the universe, and it just feels bland and and yeah, it feels boring. It doesn't set itself apart from, I want to say like a cop show, you know. It does. Yes. It. Uh, and whereas you compare it to something like Gotham, which is similar, sort of like a you know police task force, whatever, but it's similar kind of setting. Uh, but Gotham feels so rich with its characters, and it, it feels it feels like it, it's where it's supposed to be, set somewhere in uh, DC's universe, particularly with Batman. But Shield, it just kind of seems like these guys running around in a big jet, <laughs> and doing stuff that's mildly extraordinary, but not that much. <laughs> and it's not. It's just. It's not exciting. I really feel like yeah. maybe Marvel spoiled us. Yeah, but they <laughs> they gave us in their films they gave us nothing but top notch man <laughs> top notch yeah and it seems like it's kind of cut back with Agents of Shield and there's another one I, I'm forgetting I didn't watch it though it was uh, Agent Carter Did, I've never even heard of it okay it was like <laughs> a it was like a mini series uh, it dealt with that character Agent Carter uh, which was in the first Captain America oh, okay uh, she was that that British girl yeah that was kind of like his love interest. Mm-hmm. So it deals with her and um, Tony Stark's uh, father, who was also in in the first Captain America. Yeah. So it might be an interesting premise. I'm not gonna talk about it because I haven't seen it, so I don't know what it's like. <laughs> um, but just going as far as Agents of Shield, eh, no, no. yeah, pretty much. Now, as far as the films, it's hard to pick on anything. Um, however, there is a big thing that I think people often forget about is um there is a split with Marvel's properties. Now That's what I was wondering. Yeah, now before Disney bought Marvel, there was already movies coming out. I mean, we had just talked about the Sam Raimi Spider-Mans, yeah. Yeah. So that wasn't that wasn't Disney Marvel because they hadn't purchased it yet. So Okay. Yeah, so what we have is we have this divisional split uh, between what's owned by Disney, which is the movies that we know and love and we laugh at and we give all our money to, <laughs> and then we have the 20th Century Fox films, which just seem to range in quality. Um, we have the X Men series. Um, wow. Yeah, we had we have the Spider Man series, uh, the Amazing Spider Man now. Yeah. We had other films like that Daredevil film that came out a while back and then like the sub sequel to that Electro. <laughs> and um those two Fantastic Four movies. 
Yes, that was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> that was brutal. Were you there during uh, that first one? Yeah. Oh, were you were you were part of that group? Yes, I oh, was. Oh man, that was that was rough. That was and that I and that particular group we were with, they were all into it and it was hard to show disdain. <laughs> I was like, "How?" Like <laughs> I, I really didn't understand how people could enjoy, I mean I'm not like saying oh it was the word but I don't I didn't see how yeah. that could be enjoyed as like a good movie <laughs> maybe I'm wrong but you, there's no way I feel I, like the hipsters were like yeah this is good uh, maybe this, maybe this is the cult classic this, bit. and the second one was even worse oh the uh, Silver Surfer yeah the one with the Silver Surfer <laughs> <sighs> I feel like they just. They left so much. They put so much into that movie that they didn't develop character. Yeah, I don't know. It's we could make a whole. There's a, yeah. There's a whole film. podcast that could be done about what's wrong with that, those <laughs> movies. But yeah, that's the one you like loosen your tie, to oh, yeah. take off your jacket, and just relax because it's gonna be messy. Oh, <laughs> roll up your pants and uh, go in. It's like knee performing deep. open heart surgery in a bathroom. <laughs> just do the it's best bad. You can. It's shady, man. Um, <laughs> Yeah, those movies. Uh, yeah, so there, and it's 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 funny that there's kind of this war going on now between property rights. Is there? Pretty much. I mean, the big thing with that Disney was trying to do is they were trying hard to acquire the rights to Spider Man. Of course, because Avengers. Because Avengers. He pops yeah. in. He pops in and out. I mean, he's not a. And they're doing one of the upcoming films that they're doing with Captain America is Civil War. I'm not sure if you've read the Sim- Civil War comic series, but Spider Man is an integral part of that that particular storyline. And Man. if if they wanted to do Civil War, it's pretty much they could have done another hero, I suppose. But how awesome would it have been to get Spider Man? And they succeeded with that, but they had to try hard because Sony or 20th Century. Sony, whatever, whoever has the rights to it, they were Sony, yeah, yeah, they were not going to give up the rights, and they finally broke down and and did a uh, split agreement uh, with that uh, last year, late last year. Um, but yeah, it's like you have this split, and and you kind of have this war for properties. Um, they've pretty much let go of like the X Men, which is trying to build its own universe, I guess. Meh, no one cares yeah. anymore. We've all moved on. <laughs> <laughs> but they've gotten they've gotten like Daredevil for their series. They did. Yeah, whereas uh Fox had Daredevil the film and Electra, which I don't know if you saw those, but those were bad too. <laughs> yeah, they weren't. That they was weren't. The, yeah, Fantastic Four tier or I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I was a kid when Daredevil came out and I loved it and then I watched it again as an adult <laughs> and I was like, Ben Affleck, come on, man. Yeah, I, but then I realized yeah. He did the best with what he was given, and yeah. that's that. That's mm. it. <laughs> it's as much as you can do. It was cool to have Kingpin. I mean, uh, Michael Clark Michael Duncan. Clark Duncan. Is, yep. Yeah, Kingpin was kind of neat, but that was, yeah, that, was, that an, it was just, sort of an interesting wasn't. take. Yeah, he didn't he didn't really come across to me as Kingpin. But he beat people up, and it was kind of. <laughs> <cute. laughs> well, I guess that's what matters. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's 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 funny to see this this uh, this split here, and I, I think. I, I think Disney, like everything else, they're going to end up coming out on top and and buying out these franchises once once they realize that they're not making any money off of them. Yeah. <laughs> once uh, tw- Fox and all these other people that own the rights to these films, it's like because once it, once the dead horse has been beaten, uh, then Disney will swoop in and, and make a bargain. <laughs> Because what, like a billion dollars is like nothing to them, right? Right. <laughs> they could just hand That's them up. That's like Bob, half of Bob Iger's salary. He's like, <laughs> I'll cough it up for the Disney series. In cash. In thing. cash. They just come with briefcases. Yeah. Up He's to like, door. I just got to go get a guy to get the money out. <laughs> so it's pretty ridiculous. But but yeah, I, I, I do think those, those films are, are wavering. Um, like I said about Days of Future Past, really high critical reception. Not a big fan of it. Um, that was largely because of the new cast. However, there were some things as far as directing goes. The past couple Wolverine films weren't that great. Um, yeah. And then like X Men Three was like ass. It was kind of terrible. <laughs> X Men Three was very bad, and that had a lot to do with the with the director dropping out initially. But still, I mean, you could have he realized he's like. I'm- 
he, he saw <laughs> he Titanic was... <laughs> before he sunk. He's like, he's like, wow, he's... this is not going to work. You know what's funny is he he moved on to Superman Returns, which wasn't <laughs> much which of wasn't, an upgrade. Th- yeah, it wasn't that much better, but <laughs> to each his own, whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's so it's 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 kind of funny to see this, but. Yeah, I'm not saying that a lot of these 20th century owned films are terrible, but they're they're not as good. <laughs> and that's the only that's the only thing about Marvel is that, and I'm not sure if they would ever want to pick up some of these other franchises again. But as long as other companies have them, they're not going to quite be the same quality as what we're used to. So, just yeah. just a just a thought, just a foreglean mm-hmm. into what could, what could be. Um, so yeah, so that, that, that's pretty much, I think, covers the bases. It hits the nail on the noggin. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, so, the future of these companies. We've kind of touched on them briefly, but, um, you know, there's, there's some stuff to look forward to. Um, me personally, uh, I, I thought Daredevil was so good that I wasn't sure about the other shows. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it going to be? It's, there's going to be Jessica Jones, which is a weird character to pick. I don't, I'm still kind of on the fence about that, but Luke Cage might be interesting. Uh, the Iron Fist I have hope for, and then the the Defenders miniseries after that. Daredevil was such, was crafted so excellently that, um, I think it it gives me a lot of hope for, for the Netflix series. Really? Yeah. The next one is going to be Jessica Jones. And, and like I said, Kind of iffy because it's such a weird character, and I don't know. I don't know how it's going to turn out, but hopefully it'll be good. But yeah, l- really looking forward to seeing how all those pan out. Um, but uh, the future of Marvel TV, pretty much, if they if they can keep quality consistent, like they like they've done with Daredevil, then they can really get in on something good. And it doesn't even have to be network TV. Uh, they could keep doing stuff like on on Netflix, and I yeah. think I think they'll be successful. I mean, they don't. I mean, I'm not trying to say this in a bad way, but they like there's more there's less boundaries with Netflix than there is with definitely definitely. Like you can get way not more edgier, but you could really bring out the um, the true essence of what being a superhero means. I think so. <laughs> I think especially with like some of these darker guys like Daredevil yeah. and some of the people that they deal with. I think the kingpin in Daredevil was such a good portrayal. I think I think they did such a good job with that. Not not the perfect kingpin, but kind of like kind of like a, an origin story and I think they couldn't have done it any better. Um, okay. So really really good work with that. And it does give me hope for Marvel's TV considering how poorly it started for me anyway with uh with Agents of Shield. <laughs> So, yeah, they're looking forward to their new stuff, and hopefully after that. I think Daredevil, it was announced like a week or two ago that they had already picked it up for a second season, so that'll oh, be wow. that'll be good, yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm excited to see how that goes. I think in, if they continue to put the type of grind they have yeah. into it, it'll come out well. And like you were saying, they, they have with Netflix, they have a little bit more liberties. I did say that it was a little bit more gratuitous, but it didn't feel overbearing. There wasn't like a kind of like sex and nudity and you know constant yeah. swearing it wasn't stuff it wasn't stuff that you wouldn't see in a comic and it you, you could get away okay. with a little bit more in a comic book than you can on, on national u.s television yeah so and my thing too is even like you don't have networks barking down your neck you know like pretty much yeah. there's a formula to tv Mm-hmm. There really is. As much as we don't want to admit it, like <laughs> conventional TV, there's a formula for what they want to see and what they don't. And like, like we talked about with uh, uh, DC shows on on CW, anyway. Yeah, you have to assume that this teen drama crap <laughs> has to be because of the network. It has to follow a formula. Yeah, because it, um, it, it, it's what works for them, and it's what's what they think is going to make them the most money. So, so to see something different mm-hmm. is. It's almost okay. almost independent, yeah. It's it's really cool, and that's kind of neat. So I feel like even from that aspect, a hundred percent what they want to do in driving towards the story, and that's all you're getting is like exactly what they want done. Yep, that's kind of neat, and I feel like uh, that's kind of why Marvel has done well in the film area and why they can will continue. They 
like Disney kind of just steps back and say, okay, what's like the creative team behind this? I would like to think has been able to do what they've wanted. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I think a lot of people may think it's crazy to connect like five different universes together, right? People may yep. think that that's weird. Like, no, there's no way I'm going to let you do that. <laughs> but they said, you know what? You do it. It works. We'll keep letting you do it. If it fails, there's no more of it, you know? And I think that that may have. I'm I'm not saying I've been in the office, but I think that that may have something to do with why we're getting better TV shows. Yeah. Um, from, I mean, like we're getting more better movies. We're getting better TV shows on Netflix. We're getting better experiences from Marvel in that respect. Definitely, I definitely, know. I agree. And I I think, you know, as good as they are, they still can surpass what they've already done, for sure. So, here's hoping that it only gets better. And uh, with DC. They're coming up with their new line of uh, films. They've had a road roadmap uh, similar to Marvel all the way yeah. up until like the 2020 uh, and beyond uh, with all the with all the characters that they're going to be doing. Um, trying to build an interconnected film universe like like the MCU. So it may be interesting. Uh, my biggest fear for them is that they're they're just rushing into it, trying to be copycats. Yeah. Um, and not really thinking, see, like we talked about with Marvel, what makes them so successful was because of the development times, because they, they put the effort into making it as good a quality as they could. And I'm worried that with DC, that, 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 that effort is not going to be there because they're just trying to get these movies out there so they could, they can compete with Marvel. <laughs> and I don't know, it wouldn't, my th biggest concern is uh, Marvel didn't start that way either. Uh, to my knowledge, it may have been a predestined type thing, but for the way we saw it, it was like, okay, you have Iron Man, and then things start, slowly started coming out. You have the Captain America, and yeah. then they're like, okay, here, boom. It actually, believe it or not, it actually was pre-planned. It was. Yeah, since Disney acquired it, they went in with, with a game plan. But the, the thing is, is like it was such... It felt it didn't feel that way. It didn't feel like they were just like piling crap on us, you know. It felt natural. It felt that like a very natural approach to to building an interconnected universe. With with DC, it feels kind of like you said they're trying to keep up with um yeah they, it's, with the Joneses. It, yeah, it kind of seems like they want to get everything out there so they could kind of build this universe too. But it's like with Marvel, it was everything was pre planned and so meticulously put in its place and then with dc it's like i don't know it's like where are they going with all this stuff um such weird casting too i mean and who knows but uh for what we've been hearing lately about suicide squad and just you know i, I like will smith as an actor but can he do deadshot i don't know it's, it seems like a weird like like they just picked him because he's a big name <laughs> yeah um jared leto they released that photo of him and it's like you you saw it right yeah the Jared Leto okay so what opinions on that I don't know I I was it was with at least with um the Suicide Squad I will say this I was like cool Will Smith I'll see it with that I was like I'm not gonna see it it looks stupid and that's you know what he looks like to me a he, meth head <laughs> yeah aside from that he look he, okay and he looks like a juggalo too pretty much but okay yeah but. He, I mean, he he doesn't even look. It, it doesn't scream Joker because they're putting they're they're making it. They're trying to make it too Joker. Like they're putting like all that haha -ha and those smiles and stuff like that. You know what it looks like to me? It looks like a meth head who's a fan of the Joker and just like got a bunch of tattoos on him because he read the comics and he thinks the Joker's a cool guy. It doesn't look like the Joker to me. But nonetheless, a meth head. <laughs> but nonetheless, a meth head. Yeah, of course. I mean. <laughs> I mean, I how, know, why man. else would he lose all those teeth? I don't know, man. <laughs> it's disappointing. It, yeah, just seeing that is a little disappointing. Um, they revealed Aquaman, and I mean, he looks okay, but here's the thing. It's that thing we were talking about. DC's definitely trying to take this dark and edgy tone um, to their heroes, and it's like, is it going to work with everyone? I don't think so. <laughs> no. I um, really feel like it could have had like a semi healthier balance and accomplish yeah yeah I, I i'm just very wary um i'm not gonna say i'm completely on the fence i'm still gonna see them as they come out um 
But yeah, and then the preview that we had of Batman versus Superman. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I mean, not a whole lot was revealed. Uh, I could tell you that I don't like um, Lex. You hear his voice. Who, who's who's the kid that does him? I don't know him. It's, it's not Michael Sarah. <laughs> it's, it's the guy that everybody thinks looks like Michael Sarah. Oh, the yeah, the guy who was in the the Facebook one, right? Yeah, yeah. My thing is, like, Lex Luthor will always be the Smallville Lex Luthor to me for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, he, um, I, I think in Smallville they did a pretty good job throughout. Um, but, yeah, it's like this, uh, I don't know. I, I, again, it's with that casting. I'm just not sure if they know exactly what they're going for. It's, and it, it's, it's a little worrying. Um, and then, um, was that was that all we saw? I mean, it. it uh, you have uh, Affleck doing Batman, and um, it's it's um, again, it's it just keep going back to that casting. It's like, did they make the right choice? I don't know. <laughs> it's it's a little worrying to see some of these uh, characters being portrayed in this way. But again, I'll reserve judgment until I see it because when they announced Christian Bale as as Bruce Wayne Batman, I wasn't too on board with that. But then look, an arrow was born. (laughs) And then, um, you know, with with Heath Ledger and the Joker, I was like, really? It's like they they could have picked somebody better, but then he did such an awesome job. So at this point in time, I'll reserve my judgment until I actually see the movies. But just from looking at them and the production photos that they've released and from the previews and stuff, it, it doesn't give me that much hope. And they've already been running into some problems, too the director that they had for Wonder Woman had left because of creative differences. So that, that movie's already being put kind of on, on hold until they could find a new director. And so it's, it's kind of wondering what direction did they want to (laughs) take? Yeah. What direction were they going in where there was like this creative difference problem? (laughs) So it's a little worrying. Um, and yeah, it's just the biggest thing is, are they rushing development? Only time will tell, I guess. So, We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, so I think that about wraps it up as far as DC and Marvel and television and film. Yep. Uh, we're going to be winding down the podcast here. Uh, let's talk about what we're looking forward to in the near future as far as films go. He talks about how Disney now has some IPs that were previously done. I'm looking forward to... Specifically, the Fantastic Four again, because I feel like it has so much potential. Like, it really oh, yeah. does. And I, f- I don't know if it'll ever. Uh, I, I can't think of any times in my head right now when they ever crossed over with the Avengers, but I feel like they've worked together before. Mm-hmm. And perhaps it'd be cool, just even for a brief moment, like the universes cross over. So I think the trailer was excessively good mm-hmm. for Fantastic Four. So I'm, I'm gonna be there. I don't know if it'll be right away, but. It, it's definitely something I love. I love the Fantastic Four. I think they're awesome. Oh, yeah. So I think now that Disney has the rights to that. But wait, and... wait, wait. Wait, we don't want to jump the gun here because does Disney own the rights to this one? Do they? I think I think it's still Fox. I don't think I don't think Is they it gave up the rights. Still Fox. Yeah. Oh, that was the only reason I wanted to see it because <laughs> I thought they had bought creative control over this. One. Um. Okay, I'm taking myself off board. <laughs> if if not, I'm I'm jumping off. I'm looking it up right this second. Twentieth century, century Fox. Fo- yep. Ugh. Scratch <laughs> me. All right, not looking forward to that. <laughs> oh wow, um, such, such a turn. Yeah, All I'm right. going to go to uh, the next James Bond film. You can't go wrong. There. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely, Did especially you... after uh, Skyfall. Oh, Skyfall, Skyfall was amazing. I've seen it like 50 times, man. That golden year, that 2012, man, that was that was a big year. That was a good movie. That wasn't a good. It was a great movie in my opinion. It was opinion. a great movie. Um, Mockingjay Part 2 yep. is another movie. Um, but my thing is the book didn't end anywhere near how the series of books didn't end anywhere near how I would want them to. A lot of people and felt I'm, that way from my understanding because yeah. I, I'm close to a few people that read that entire series and that's what they tell me. Is that it, it? It wasn't an ideal ending. It's disappointing. It really. Yeah. It, 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 so I. I already know I'm gonna be disappointed because I've already been disappointed. <laughs> so when the movie comes out, it'll just be because I like the series of okay. movies. Yeah, but still and, looking uh, forward to it. 
seeing how yeah, they kind of do their take on it. Um, Mission Impossible. It's almost the Guilty Pleasure series now for me. <laughs> like, it started off kind of en- like... I enjoyed the last one, Ghost Protocol. Yeah, it was fun. It was a fun was. movie. Um, so I, I'm I'm looking forward to that one as well. It, it's not on my, uh, like, super my high up on my yeah. to-do list, but... Um, but uh, who's who's directing that one? I remember Brad Bird directed Ghost Protocol, and he's such a great director. He uh, he's he's done a lot of Simpsons episodes, is what I know him from. <laughs> oh, right on. Yeah, very very uh, versatile and creative director for a lot of a lot of classic Simpsons episodes, like prior to season ten. Looks but, like um, it has a new direction. Is Christopher McQuire now? Oh, Christopher McQuarrie. Quarry, yeah. Yeah, um, he's he's done a few things. Uh, he's done like um, Valkyrie. He's done Valkyrie. Uh, one of those movies, Jack Reacher. Um, was something similar, also with Tom Cruise. So that's probably why he's jumping. Edge on of that Tomorrow one. with Tom Cruise. Did he do Edge of Tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. Really? Oh, okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right. That was another 2014 film. Yeah. Okay. I yeah I liked Edge of Tomorrow too. So maybe you know maybe this one will be good too. So, um. So yeah, I, I am I'm I'm looking forward to that one as well. Right on, right on. So what are some of your picks? Uh, some of my are... picks? Uh, well, as far as like what we got going on this year, there's plenty to do. <laughs> um, June 12th, we have Jurassic World coming out. That should uh, be a fun movie. I think it'll be fun. Um, I don't know if it's going to be good or not. Uh, I like the Jurassic Park movies. I like dinosaurs. <laughs> I like big monsters roaming through territories and eating people. Um, it's always I, fun. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I always do like uh, the Jurassic Park when it's set in in like uh, the jungle foresty areas. Never liked it as much when uh, you know like uh, the first hour and a half was so great with Jurassic Park Two: Lost World, and then as soon as they brought the T Rex into San Francisco Bay or wherever the heck it was, it just it it lost all my respect. <laughs> <laughs> it was so it was so bad and uh, yeah, but you know whatever. Um, Jurassic World. I'm kind of hoping for a return to quality here with this one. Um, <laughs> and I'm not even talking. I still thought Lost World was an okay movie, but the third one. Did you see the third one? Yeah, Joe Johnston again. That's that guy that directed the first Captain America. Okay. One of the biggest reasons I was cautious about about watching Captain America, but yeah, <laughs> that third one was. It, oh, it was a piece. <laughs> um, and it was short, too, like an hour and a half or something like that. Did not enjoy it. So I'm hope I'm really hoping that uh, Jurassic World... I mean, it it doesn't... You don't have to work much to get better than three. But here's hoping that it's similar to the quality of the original. <laughs> <laughs> here's so, to hoping. Yeah, here's to hoping. I just, I just hope it'll be all right. Um, some lesser-known stuff. Um, November 25th, we have a movie coming out called The Martian. Uh, that is going to be directed by Ridley Scott. Okay. Very so. famous director. This is going to be like his third sci-fi film. Very famous director. He directed the original Alien. Okay. Um, his second one was Blade Runner. Very important piece as far as cyberpunk goes. Very big cult classic kind of film with Harrison Ford. Um, and then Prometheus, which came out a few years ago. Oh yeah, Prometheus. That was everyone loved Prometheus. Man. I loved it. I thought it was great. Yeah, people. Some people had issues with the ending and stuff, but I thought it was good. It, funny enough, he was supposed to be directing the second Prometheus, the sequel to it. Uh huh. And then uh, in development time, he decided to do The Martian instead. <laughs> that means that's a good sign. Maybe, maybe. Because that know. means he's like, oh man, this is going to be good. Yeah. I can't not be on this. You know? <laughs> Yeah, may I don't know. I mean, I'm hoping it's going to be good, and I like a lot of Ridley Scott's films. So, you know, who who knows what it's going to be like? Uh, it is based off of a novel that is fairly recent um, that has the same name. It's called The Martian. The lead character is going to be Matt Damon. Ah, and which he's in like everything nowadays. But <laughs> yeah, basically, it's about a team of astronauts that shoot off to Mars, uh, go around and explore for a bit. Matt Damon's character gets separated, and they believe him to be dead. And he's stranded on Mars, and basically he has to find a way to let people know that he's still on there. So it, to me, it kind of sounds like a 
a little bit like Castaway, <laughs> but yeah. in, in space. <laughs> okay. So it sounds like an interesting concept. It's got a really good director behind it. I think Matt Damon is a fine actor, so um, I think it'll probably turn out to be pretty good. I think it could, it has the potential. It has the potential. It has the potential, yeah, and I'll probably just you know be going to see it uh, when it comes out. So hopefully, hopefully. Uh, another movie that's not going to be quite as well known is going to be in the heart of the sea never heard of it okay yeah it's, <laughs> figured you wouldn't um i'm sure not that many people would have either it's going to be directed by ron howard um another fairly famous director yeah uh, released on december 11th um it is based off of a sort of factual novel uh of the same name called in the heart of the sea based off of uh, an event, it was the sinking of a whale ship called the Essex. Okay. And uh, basically, tales of the survivors of this uh, of this disaster, pretty much, this this sperm whale had um, taken down this, this whaling ship. This was one of, I think, two events that inspired the author Herman Melville to write his, his famous, famous novel, Moby Dick. Yep. yep. <laughs> I was thinking that as you were... <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so it... I mean, for one of those novels that they make you read in school, <laughs> I think Moby Dick is like one of my favorite books. That's one of those historic pieces of literature. Yeah, that's almost like required reading in uh, most schools. It is. It is. I think it's a really good book, um, and a film about the actual events. It's not, it's, it's almost going to be like a Moby Dick movie, um, but a film about the actual events is going to be fairly interesting, I think. I think has, it'll be fun. Yeah, it has Chris Hemsworth, um, who plays Thor. Nice. So you got you got a fairly decent actor behind it. Um, and, yeah, so um, I'm hoping that one's going to be good. It's only a few days before some other big movies, though, so <laughs> who knows how it's going to do at the box office. Uh, it's one of those ones that sits in the middle. Probably, that maybe, we'll get maybe. On DVD, yeah. Or Blu-ray yeah, I'm thinking to, like, it's going to be something like that. I don't or, think yeah. I don't think it's going to be a huge movie, but I'm hoping that the quality is at least going to be good, so I can enjoy it. Yeah, as long as the budget's high enough that yeah. it's a good movie. From what I saw in the previews, wrong. I mean, it looks pretty decent. So, um, and like you, November sixth coming out, Spectre. Yeah. I mean, I, I am not. I I can't be excited enough for a James Bond film. Like I said, Skyfall was such a good movie um, that it it just gets you hyped for the next one. Um, Sam Mendes, who directed Skyfall, originally said he was not going to be returning to direct another Bond film. But they talked him into it. And this guy's a, he's, he's a really good director. He hasn't done a whole lot, but... He is sort of this prestigious kind of guy, <laughs> and um, to direct a to direct a, another Bond film, and the biggest thing that I always felt was lacking from the rebooted James Bond series was it never felt it it, it never felt quite as in touch with the older films as it could have been. Okay. In um, Quantum of Solace, you know how they were um, kind of leading up to an organization. Yeah. I was thinking it was going to be Spectre. Uh, for those people listening that might be familiar with the James Bond series, Dr. No was the first film in the MGM Bond series, and it introduced the organization Spectre, which Bond dealt with throughout pretty much his career <laughs> uh, in, oh. in the films. And um, what a disappointment it was to me to hear at the end of the film that they revealed the organization was called Quantum. And it's like, what's going on? <laughs> that was a perfect end for Spectre. And finally, uh, with Skyfall, it, 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 it um, I don't know how it was for you, but it definitely felt like they were trying to bring back um, kind of the old feeling of the films. They okay. even said it in the lines. I mean, Money Penny and so, a couple other people said, you know, the old ways are best. Yeah, man. And I think that was a direct reference to taking uh, – <laughs> influences from the original Bond films. I mean, they brought in Q, he had a couple gadgets. Um there was it, it kind of had the same structure as one of the older films. So, it, it felt kind of like the uh Skyfall was felt, felt kind of like the gold finger of um the Sean okay. Connery days to me anyway. <laughs> and to have Spectre being brought up 
into the into the rebooted series, I can't be excited enough. So Spectre is going to be one of my top, if not the top film for me um, that I'm anticipating. The hype. The hype is real. And here's another one that a lot of people are going to be getting behind. It's, yeah, big one. <laughs> yeah, if you don't recognize what that is, I don't blame you. <laughs> it's, um, but, so yeah, Star Wars, Episode yeah. 7. Um, it's going to be hype, dude. Well, I think it's going to be... <laughs> There's now going to be a tear of three different types of people. The mm-hmm. one that likes the original trilogy, the ones that like the new stuff, and then the people that like the new new stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, the original fanboys, the the prequel, the people that the young kids that hopped on on the prequels, and then, <laughs> and then yeah, this newer this newer stuff, which um, a lot of the older fanboys seem to be kind of migrating towards. They're like, oh, you know, George Lucas is dead or whatever, <laughs> and now we have uh, Abrams to get behind. Um, from what I've seen, you know, the previews. Yeah, yeah, uh, the first one. <laughs> it didn't really do anything for me. The second yeah. one, the second one, was a little more interesting though. It was pretty good. I must. Yeah, kind of harken back. You know, you did, you did have more influences from the original series, kind of making their way through the teaser. <laughs> Harrison Ford. Did he get in a bad accident? How was he? Yeah, well, he did. He off? did get in a bad accident. I just think it's funny that he sounds so ragged in the preview. I think so. How is he going to pull this movie off? I don't know. Well, he's he's an old guy. He's, what is he, like 71 now? I mean, if they can superimpose uh, <laughs> Paul Walker into Fast and the Furious, they can do something with uh, maybe Harrison Ford if he can't stand. <laughs> I just want to know why he sounds so evil at the end scene. You saw the preview, right? Yeah. I like how they cut. I like how you don't see him at first. Like you're supposed to recognize his voice. And you, you kind of like, don't. Like, it's like a black screen, and then it's like, Chewy. And you're like, whoa. <laughs> it's like, must be the villain talking. And then it shows, you know, Harrison Ford, and he's like, we're home. And then... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean... And it's like, oh, it's Harrison Ford. Since the Blu-ray it's version... It like, doesn't sound like him. <laughs> I think he, like, because I've rewatched uh like, the Blu-ray versions, and yeah. I think his voice sounds kind of like a lot different, IMO. Yeah, it does sound a lot different. At least in that clip. I mean, he doesn't sound that much different yeah. if you watch him in, like, other things. But, like, that particular clip, why does he sound so raspy? It's like, Chewy, I'm Batman. I am Harrison Ford. <laughs> you know how I do, like, impressions every now and then. I am Han Solo. It's like, it's like you, you never quite get a Harrison Ford impression down. It's You almost have, like, this southern drawl kind of thing going on in this baritone voice. Um, and it's hard to get. But if if he if his voice is gonna be like that throughout the, the entirety series, um, yeah, I I got Harrison Ford down. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be hearing my Harrison Ford impressions all day long, all year. <laughs> um, Star Wars is a big topic, though. Um, I mean, uh, we were kind of talking about it earlier, but off off the uh, off recording, but thinking maybe doing a, a Star Wars podcast at some point. Yeah, there's so yeah. much to cover with them coming up, yeah, man. There, I mean, there's so much coming out, um, and then with the Disney acquisition and all that, there's so much information that could be talked about. Um, but yeah, as far as the films go, I mean, we just had uh, the announcement. I mean, we know they've been doing. There's they're going to be doing some side films outside of the main series, but uh, they just announced Rogue One, which sounds interesting. I'm actually might be a little bit more excited for Rogue One than I am about Episode Seven, just because I'm so apprehensive about what it might be. Um, but the, the, I mean, there's so much coming out. So who knows? It, it might be. Uh, this is going to be an exciting time. This is the time, man. Yeah, yeah. This more more Star Wars, and don't know what it's going to be like, but crossing my fingers, hoping it's going to be good. And uh, the second the second teaser trailer just kind of like raised my hopes a little bit because it seemed. It seemed a little bit more interesting than the first one made it out to be. And uh, I think that's going to be about it for me. Um, and me. And you as well. This is uh, this going to be the end for all of us. This is the end. <laughs> Hold your breath and how. No, I'm kidding. <sighs> <laughs> I went there. I went oh, there. Oh, you did. We, we brought it around half yeah. circle because we, we just started talking about Bond. But... 
Yeah, um, we did it. <laughs> so that's it for the show. Thank you guys very much for listening. Um, and uh, we'll see you around next time. And this has been Sin. And Sev. We'll see you in the e-space. Joey.